Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for May 2nd, 2022. Glad you are with me. Let's go ahead and get started. Today is National Brother and Sisters Day, Early May Bank Holiday, International Harry Potter Day, Melanoma Day, National Life Insurance Day, and National Truffle Day. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Redeeming God, we give you thanks that through the gift of our baptism you have clothed us in your grace and made us heirs of your promise. By the power of your Holy Spirit, set us free from all that we fear and let us live according to our faith. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Our readings begin with Psalm 97. Listen for God's word to speak to you. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around God. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of God's throne. Fire goes before God and consumes God's adversaries on every side. God's lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim God's righteousness, and all the peoples behold God's glory. All worshippers of images are put to shame. Those who make their boast in worthless idols, all gods bow down before God. Zion hears and is glad. And the towns of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O God. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. God guards the lives of God's faithful. God rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to God's holy name. Now we have from Exodus chapter 18, verses 13 through 27. The next day Moses sat as judge for the people, while the people stood around him from morning until evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that he was doing for the people, he said, What is this that you are doing for the people? Why do you sit alone, while all the people stand around you from morning until evening? Moses said to his father-in-law, Because the people come to me to inquire of God. When they have a dispute, they come to me, and I decide between one person and another, and I make known to them the statutes and instructions of God. Moses' father-in-law said to him, What you are doing is not good. You will surely wear yourself out, both you and these people with you. For the task is too heavy for you. You cannot do it alone. Now listen to me. I will give you counsel, and God be with you. You should represent the people before God, and you should bring their cases before God. Teach them the statutes and instructions, and make known to them the way they are to go and the things they are to do. You should also look for able men among all the people, men who fear God, who are trustworthy and hate dishonest gain, Set such men over them as officers over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Let them sit as judges for the people at all times. Let them bring every important case to you, but decide every minor case themselves. So it will be easier for you, and they will bear the burden with you. If you do this, and God so commands you, then you will be able to endure, and all these people will go to their home in peace. So Moses listened to his father-in-law and did all that he had said. Moses chose able men from all Israel and appointed them as heads over the people as officers, over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. And they judged the people at all times, heard cases, hard cases they brought to Moses, but any minor cases they decided themselves. Then Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went off to his own country. From 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1-14. through 14. Now as an elder myself and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as one who shares in the glory to be revealed, I exhort the elders among you to tend the flock of God that is in your charge, exercising the oversight, 
not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you do it, not for sordid gain, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those in your charge, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will win the crown of glory that never fades away. In the same way you are younger, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders. And all you must clothe yourselves with humility in the, your dealings with one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that God may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on God, because God cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Sed fast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And all after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to God's eternal glory in Christ will God's self restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To God be the power forever and ever. Amen. Through Silvanus, whom I consider a faithful brother, I have written this short letter to encourage you and to testify that this is the true grace of God. Stand fast in it. Your sister church in Babylon, chosen together with you, sends you greetings, and so does my son Mark. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. And from Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 through 17 and 3, 1 through 6. An account of the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, and Judah the father of Perez and Zerah by Tamar, and Perez the father of Hezron, and Hezron the father of Aram, and Aram the father of Amminadab, and Amminadab the father of Nation, and Nation the father of Salmon, and Salmon the father of Boaz by Rahab, and Boaz the father of Obed by Ruth, and Obed the father of Jesse, and Jesse the father of King David. And David was the father of Solomon, by the wife of Uriah, and Solomon the father of Rehoboam, and Rehoboam the father of Abijah, and Abijah the father of Asaph, and Asaph the father of Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat the father of Joram, and Joram the father of Uzziah, and Uzziah the father of Jotham, and Jotham the father of Ahaz, and Ahaz the father of Hezekiah, and Hezekiah the father of Manasseh, and Manasseh the father of Amos, and Amos the father of Josiah, and Josiah the father of Jeho Jehoniah and his brothers at the time of the deportation to Babylon. After this, the deportation to Babylon, Jeho Jehoniah was the father of Salathiel, and Salathiel the father of Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel the father of Abiud, and Abiud the father of Eliakim, and Elikim the father of Azor, and Azor the father of Zadok, and Zadok the father of Achim, and Achim the father of Eliud, and Eliud the father of Eleazar, and Eleazar the father of Mathan, and Mathan the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Joseph, jo Jesus was born, who is called the Messiah. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations, and from David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations, and from the deportation to Babylon to the Messiah, 14 generations. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him in all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our readings for today, we have from Exodus. Um, this is sort of the end, 
or or nearing the end of this sort of testing section, um, we skipped over from yesterday uh, the father-in-law of Moses, Jethro, comes to bring his wife, Zipporah, to him. And they have this wonderful sort of meeting. They have a meal together. And Moses tells Jethro of all the things that God has done. And Jethro praises the Lord, praises Yahweh, the God of heaven. Now, the role of this, the point of this, right, is how are we seeing this blessing of God that was promised initially to Abraham and is now on these people? How, how do we see that play out? Well, we have the Am- Amalekites, and they come and they immediately attack the Israelites. They are put in opposition. They put themselves in opposition to these people and therefore to this God, and they are defeated, and there is a curse laid upon them that forever that these people are going to be enemies of God's people. Okay, then we have Jethro, who himself, while he is, he's part of sort of the extended family of the Jewish people, is not Jewish himself, right? He's not a descendant of Jacob. Um, He is uh, the, I believe it's it's part of the um, other children of Abraham. He's, he's part of that line. Um, but he still represents sort of the nations, the, those who are outside of this covenant people. And how do they relate to this people? He comes and he praises God. He is joyful at what God has done for these people. And now in today's story, we have this, this new and very interesting thing, right? Moses is judging all the people, acting as a judge for all the people and every little nitpicky thing that they might have. And what we've seen of these people, they're pretty nitpicky and they're pretty like grumbly. So there's a lot of cases that he's hearing. And I imagine that a lot of them are just dumb things, right? They're not things that are are really hard to judge, but it's just volume, right? And it's a whole lot of stuff. Jethro sees this and says, that's, that's not a great idea. So here's my suggestion. And he gives the suggestion of having sort of lower judges over tens, over fifties, over hundreds, over thousands, and anything that gets through all of those judges, right? Those cases you listen to, right? But she teach these judges, give them the rules. Give them the mandates from God. Give them the ways that things should be so that they can judge for themselves. Choose people who are wise. Choose people who are able to, you know, take on this role. But then you won't wear yourself out. You won't wear these people out. And so we have the wisdom of the nations coming to the people of Israel. And because they have this relationship, because, um, you know, Jethro has praised God for the things that God has done, this wisdom is now received and, and Moses benefits from it. And so we have this really interesting interplay. We have, we have two options, right? There are those who put themselves in opposition to these people um, who are cursed. We see those, the nations who put themselves in alliance, who, who come alongside these people and they are not only blessed, but they are also a blessing um, that, that Moses can learn from Jethro, that Moses, the Israelites, can learn sometimes from these nations when they are aligned to the purposes of God. Um, so we have this setup of, of sort of a court system. And this is all still, it's before we've gotten to Sinai. There's still this sort of um, organization is put together before they even get to Sinai, before there are official rules and, and um, God has given the law. There is already this sort of beginning of an organization. Then in First Peter, Peter commends as an elder... Um, he exhorts the elders among you to serve as stewards, as, as shepherds, 
of this flock, to take care of them, much as those who were chosen by Moses to to judge the people, to, to act as judges for the people, to oversee them, to make sure that things are going well. Um, those who are called as elders should do the same. This is our purpose as teaching elders and as ruling elders in our tradition, um, that this is our call to oversee the flock, to, to see the things that um, need to be tended, to, to care for others. That is the purpose of it. We don't serve on behalf of ourselves, but we serve on behalf of the great shepherd who, when he returns, will find us to have either been doing our job well or otherwise, right? Um, there's also a reminder, I think in here, but also certainly in the Moses text, that you can't do everything yourself. And this is a hard one for us to hear. It's a hard one for me to hear. Um, because Many times it is easier to do things by ourselves. It's hard to entrust things to other people, to, to allow them to do it. But it is necessary. Um, Peter talks about sort of the, those who are younger to um, respect those who are older. Um, I think there's also a natural flow there where those who are older are also to pass on things to those who are younger because they're eventually going to be older, right? And they are, are to be entrusted with these things as, as time goes on. Um, and so P Peter calls us to discipline ourselves, um, to resist the temptation of sin, um, to suffer with Christ, and to bring Christ's glory, to bring glory to God in all the things that we do, um, and to have a humble heart, to be not proud, uh, not to sort of, again, take on everything by ourselves or, or assume that we are right about everything, but to be humble, to, to trust that God has better plans than ours. And then we have a closing words of, you know, the greetings from the people that he is writing from as well. Then from Matthew, we have the very beginning of the Gospel of Matthew, and it begins with a genealogy um, from Abraham to Joseph, the adopted father of um, Jesus, right? Or actually through all, all the way to Jesus. Um, there's an interesting sort of division where there's 14 generations more or less, roughly, um, from Abraham to David, then 14 generations from David to the exile, and 14 generations from the exile to Jesus, the Messiah. Um, so that's an interesting thing. We also see a couple of notable inclusions. All of them are the fathers, except for a handful of mothers. And the handful of mothers are actually really interesting stories, right? Um, there is. Rahab, who was a prostitute from the city of Jericho. Uh, Ruth, who was a foreigner and a widow. Um, we have the wife of Uriah, who uh, that's, you know, that's Bathsheba. That's, that's an interesting story. Um, and also Tamar, who basically used her while she, she posed as a prostitute in order to have a child. So, um, so yeah, some interesting inclusions there. And we have this direct connection between um, Jesus and David, which is important because part of Messiah, the anointed one, is that he would be this descendant of David. He would be the rightful king of this people. This is sort of heightened by all of these those who go after David, right, who rule. And the people who would be reading this initially would be very familiar with these names from First uh, and Second Kings, from First and Second Chronicles, these stories of kings, many of which were not great, but some of which were really wonderful, um, but all called to rule because they were descendants of David. These were the firstborn sons of David, for the most part. And then the exile, the loss of that kingship, 
and all of these men now who are named who should be king and yet are not. Um, and so there's this building tension. And with this sort of, again, for this uh, parallelism, I suppose, of uh, 14 generations, 14 generations, 14 generations, there's this growing sort of um, expectation that this Messiah might be coming soon. Then we have the introduction of John the baptizer, who is off in the wilderness, is, is cut out of the same cloth sort of as the prophet um, Isaiah, and takes on this same role, and this role that is prophesied about him, um, calling repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Um, he's a voice of one call, crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. He is a uh, sort of a classic prophet, right? Camel's hair and uh, a thick leather belt would be a pretty common sort of sort of motif for a prophet. This is what you would expect a prophet to be wearing. Um, he eats locusts and wild honey. He's out in the wilderness. He uh, wilderness is an important part of of sort of spiritual journey. Uh, think of the people in the wilderness for 40 years. Think of, you know, Moses sent out into the wilderness. Think of all the times that wilderness are, is this time of learning and growing. Um, and people are coming out. People are thirsty and, and hunger for the things that he is saying. He is preparing the way of the Lord, and we will see what happens with that. So those are our readings for today. Let's go ahead and join together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. Eternal God, we praise you for your mighty love given in Christ's sacrifice on the cross and the new life we have received by his resurrection. Especially we thank you for ministries of teaching and pastoral care. those who work to help and heal, sacrifices others have made for our benefit. Opportunities for our generous giving. The presence of Christ in our weakness and suffering. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks for the wisdom of others, for the shared responsibility that God has given us, for the opportunity to serve uh, flocks, those who are under us, for the burden that is shared by those around us. God of grace, let our concern for others reflect Christ's self-giving love, not only in our prayers, but also in our practice. Especially we pray for the church in Latin America, a right relationship between humans and the earth, those who are wounded or face death, those who keep watch over the sick and dying. All who speak up and take action for what is right. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for Kathy, a friend of Ashley's who has medical issues. For Gerilyn. Dave's sister, who's beginning treatment for cancer. For Joy, a former play school teacher and close friend of Debbie's, who's finishing cancer treatments next week. For Henry, Beverly's grandson with mono. We thank God for Lorraine's friend from Ukraine, who found out that the rest of his siblings are now in Russia. For John and Carol, former members who moved to North Carolina. John is going through uh, bypass surgery this week. For Mike and 
safe travels, for friends of Beverly's, for Grace, a friend of Bill's who's having shoulder surgery, for Charlotte, a friend of Grace who's facing back surgery. We rejoice with Carolyn to, um, uh, at the birth of her grandson, Grant. We pray for Olga's husband, who is having surgery right now. Um, Olga is our cleaning lady, and her husband has uh, jaw cancer. We pray for Nick, who is recovering from the first phase of his shoulder replacement surgery. And we thank God for the birth of Millie, daughter of Caitlin and Chaz. To these prayers, we add all of those that are on our hearts and our minds. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. From the waters of death, you raise us with him and renew your gift of life within us. Increase in our hearts and minds the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us continue to praising the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, like good stewards of the grace of God, let us serve one another with whatever gifts we have received. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for Daily Prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button, as well as going to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA 2018 edition, and our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Thank you for joining me. Have a blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.